Like, no, that's a super volcano that is a continent killer. Super volcano is basically a name that was made up for a volcano that has at some point in the past produced the largest style of eruption. I don't know about you, but I find it astonishing how little attention the Yellowstone supervolcano gets, considering it's arguably the most dangerous volcano in the world. Classified as a supervolcano, its potential for destruction is immense, yet it remains a mystery to many and, even more concerning, an afterthought for some. But recently, there's been a resurgence of interest in the topic, notably by popular podcaster and comedian Joe Rogan. In a gripping episode of the Joe Rogan Experience, Rogan dives deep into the cataclysmic impact an eruption could have, a scenario that's enough to jolt anyone into concern. So what exactly did Joe uncover, and why should we be sitting up and paying attention now? Buckle up. We're about to unpack the chilling realities of the Yellowstone supervolcano that might just have you reevaluating its threat. Chapter 1. Could Yellowstone really end the human race? I know what you might be thinking. This is just classic Joe Rogan making everyone scared and talking conspiracy theories. But this isn't necessarily true. For those who do know, the Yellowstone volcano is something that's been studied extensively. And while many of the topics on Joe Rogan's podcast tend to move away from conventional science a bit, this is actually one topic where everyone seems to be on the same page. I've talked to enough people that are like really, they're really educated in the history of ancient cultures and ancient civilizations and the evidence of natural disasters wiping people out and people having to start from scratch. It seems, it seems like we're a part of like this giant never ending cycle of getting knocked back into the stone age and then rebuilding to a new version of complex society. I think we're on a version of that now, but I think there's been many versions of that. Yep. And I, I, I think that that's also on the table for us. Yellowstone really is deadly. To start with, it's worth looking at the supervolcano term itself. As you'd probably expect, a supervolcano is a much larger type of volcano, larger than the regular ones we see erupt from time to time. To give a bit more context, Neil deGrasse Tyson, one of the most popular physicists in the world, also shed some light on that back in August 2020. Neil invited a volcanologist named Janine Kreiner on his show, Star Talk, where she spoke about the supervolcano classification. Now, in terms of eruption size, Janine also explained the scale that these supervolcanoes tend to have. So Yellowstone is in the news anytime someone wants to think apocalyptically. So, and we've all been told and we've all heard it's a supervolcano. What is a supervolcano? Supervolcano is basically a name that was made up for a volcano that has at some point in the past produced the largest style of eruption. The Yellowstone volcano measures a distance of about 45 miles in diameter alone. So. I think we kind of get the scale of such a volcano. Now, besides the fact that they are bigger than regular volcanoes, supervolcanoes also spew much more dangerous materials when they erupt. Okay, so when you say a big eruption, do you speak of volume of yes. ash that comes out? Or, and, or, or, so what's a, what's a typical volume for a supervolcano to be called a supervolcano? So for these super eruptions, or we have this Volcano Explosivity Index, VEI. So it goes from one, or there is smaller as well, but for this one to eight, eight is this super eruption. You know, one to eight of Yellowstone being eight and, and <laughs> right. Walk in the Park being one, where is 2020? So a VEI eight or these super eruptions are, um, you're looking at a volume of magma erupting that's around a thousand cubic kilometers. So a cubic, lot of rock coming out of the cubic ground. Cubic kilometers. So a thousand, if you take the cube root, you get how big a cube would be on the side. So 10 kilometers on a side. So for, for the American audience, you heard of 10K runs. That's about six miles. So imagine a cube six miles across deep and high. Damn. And that's how much lava came out. That's crazy. That's, yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, when you consider a volcanic eruption, you think about the molten lava covering the entire land mass and engulfing the whole surrounding area. Now, while this would happen in the case of a hypothetical eruption at Yellowstone, it would be far from the only effect that this event could cause. In fact, the lava coming out of the volcano isn't even the biggest thing to worry about. Why? Well, according to scientists, there most likely isn't even much lava at Yellowstone. You see, before lava is spewed out of a volcano, it is first created as magma. Think of it as how caterpillars become butterflies and then come out of their shell. Magma is created. It grows and then becomes the lava that is shot out of the volcano. For Yellowstone, however, much of the magma won't even get the chance to become lava. This is because, instead of developing, 
an eruption would basically shoot the magma into the sky, turning it into airborne particles of ash. Besides the ash, much of the magma will shoot out as rock particles. And with the wind carrying it all, there's no telling how much it would be able to travel or even how quickly it would be able to move. The effects of such an occurrence would be so crazy that scientists say it could lead to the death of everyone in the entire United States and Canada as well. For good measure, think about it. If a person breathes this type of toxic ash, it would form a cement-like structure in their lungs and essentially choke them out. Buildings would also be covered in ash, and the particles could easily affect things like electrical grids and power lines. So yeah, this is not looking good at all. Oh, by the way, if you think you're gravy because you don't live in the United States and Canada, well, you've got another thing coming. Due to the massive volume of ash in the air, a volcanic eruption on the scale of Yellowstone would cause a global temperature drop. The ash in the air would be enough to significantly block out the sun, creating a sheet of smoke above our planet that would make it more difficult for the sun's rays to pass through. According to some sources, this could lead to a drop in global temperatures by up to 10 degrees, an effect that could easily last up to a decade. And with the sun essentially being blocked from the earth, you can imagine the effects that this could have. For instance, agriculture and food production will be significantly affected as growing seasons change and crop yields drop significantly. There could also be untold disruptions to ecosystems as animals and plant species struggle to adapt to the changing weather conditions. And let's not forget the effect this could have on human societies, from resource scarcity to social changes and much more. So, while it seems more like the United States, Canada, and other countries around them could be the ones to bear the brunt of this volcanic eruption, make no mistake about it. The entire world is going to feel its effects, and those effects could probably change the way we live. Chapter 2. This could be the end. So, before we dive into the clip from Joe Rogan's podcast, I think we need a bit of a backstory. The Yellowstone Volcano, or as it's more formally called, the Yellowstone Caldera, is a supervolcano located in the Yellowstone National Park in northwestern Wyoming, although the park itself actually expands into parts of Montana and Idaho. Now, for those who might not know, a caldera is essentially a crater that is formed as a result of a volcanic eruption. This essentially means there have been eruptions at Yellowstone in the past. We'll get to that in a minute. The Yellowstone Caldera, and really the entire Yellowstone Park, is one of the most popular tourist attractions in the Cowboy State. But as you can imagine, it's also one of the most dangerous, being one of the world's biggest volcanic systems. The Yellowstone Caldera sits above one of the planet's hot spots, essentially parts of our planet where hot plumes rise and form volcanoes. But I think it'd be a lot easier for us to bounce back than someone 2,000 years ago with our technology and, and our ability to... <clears throat> no? No. No, not at all. Not at all. Because when it hits, first of all, very few people survive and everything goes to... There's no electricity, no generators work, there's no one pumping oil, no one Wait, knows how to make a generator, no one knows how to make a cell phone, so all that technology is lost. Well, the Jim Baker people do. Wait. So far, there have been three eruptions at Yellowstone in the past three million years. The Huckleberry Ridge Tuff eruption, which occurred 2.1 million years ago, the Mesa Falls eruption 1.3 million years ago, and the Lava Creek eruption 631,000 years ago. Considering that there have been three eruptions already, some people have been wondering whether we should be worried about another one that could eventually happen. And in a recent episode of his podcast, Joe Rogan actually touched on the topic, speaking with author and fellow podcaster Michael Malice. Back in March, Joe explained that a possible eruption at Yellowstone would be completely and absolutely devastating. The discussion began with Joe pointing out that as a species, what, but what would this be like a meteor other than a meteor hitting the earth Meteors what would cause this super volcano would kill okay. almost all of us the yellowstone super volcano it's a caldera volcano like they didn't they didn't realize that it was so big until somewhere in like the 2000s i think it was they did satellite imagery and they realized oh my god that's the caldera of a volcano like this yellowstone thing we thought it was just this crazy place with hot springs like no that's a super volcano that is a continent killer and it blows every six to eight hundred thousand years and everyone dies like the whole country dies and it happens every six to eight hundred thousand years and the last time it happened was like six hundred thousand well, see ago. that's another reason texas should be its own country humans are very vulnerable to a host of possible apocalyptic occurrences michael went on to point out that things could be different for us in this age thanks in no small part to the growth of our advanced technology but joe wasn't necessarily sold on that idea as well so what could really be that bad that would cause an existential threat, possibly wiping us all out and leaving no crumbs? Well, according to Joe, supervolcanoes are among the biggest threats to us as a species and to our planet. And that's where Yellowstone comes in. It's pretty interesting to think about. Over the years, there have been more and more existential threats that have essentially made us rethink our role in the universe. Climate change is getting crazier, 
and the threat of nuclear war remains a huge problem. Now, we've got to add supervolcanoes to the list. What the heck? Chapter 3. Comparing Yellowstone to other volcanic events. We've already seen enough proof that temperature changes are a significant possibility when it comes to supervolcano eruptions. Back in June 1991, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted in what was the second largest volcanic event of the 20th century. The eruption had been triggered by an earthquake that happened close to the mountain, and it was so devastating that it produced a column of ash and smoke that rose over 30 kilometers high. In 22 days, the combination of sulfur dioxide and air circled the entire world, and according to reports, the smoky cloud literally deflected about 2% of the entire world's incoming solar radiation, with global temperatures dropping by an average of 0.5 degrees Celsius. Mount Pinatubo eruption released about 10 billion tons of magma into the surrounding region. Ash deposits measuring over 2 inches thick covered a land area of over 4,000 square kilometers, causing crops and other plant life around the mountain to burn. Now, here's the kicker. The Mount Pinatubo eruption removed so much rock and magma from below the volcano that the summit collapsed and formed a caldera that measured 2.5 kilometers in diameter. And if you remember from earlier, Yellowstone's caldera measures 45 kilometers in diameter. So, if Mount Pinatubo's eruption could cause all of this damage, imagine what Yellowstone's hypothetical eruption could cause. Then there was the Tambora eruption located on the island of Sumbawa in Indonesia. The explosion of Mount Tambora is seen by many as the most devastating volcanic eruption to ever happen. The event happened in April of 1815, with loud explosions being heard from distances as far as 1,200 miles. Even before the eruption itself happened, the sounds were so intense that locals reportedly thought an invasion was imminent, and they sent out troops to protect the land in the surrounding areas. Unbeknownst to them, the largest volcanic eruption in recorded history was about to take place. The Tambora eruption was considered at the peak of the volcanic explosivity index. When the volcano lit up, pyroclastic flows consisting of ash, magma particles, and gases as hot as 700 degrees Celsius came tumbling down from the mountain and into the sea. The particles covered about 12 miles on each side, instantly killing anyone within the area and destroying an incredible amount of plant life and land. While the eruption lasted about three hours, it caused a reported 10,000 deaths and wiped out the village of Tambora entirely. The volcano released about 30 cubic miles of rock particles and ash, as well as 60 megatons of sulfur. This sulfur mixed with water in the air created clouds of sulfuric acid that blocked out massive amounts of sunlight. Due to this, the global temperature dropped by an average of 0.5 to 5.5 degrees, leading to massive changes in global ecology. Things were so bad that reports confirmed that temperatures could literally switch from blazing hot status to near freezing levels within just a matter of hours. The sky was tainted with cloud colors ranging from pink to purple. In fact, things were so bad that there was quite literally no summer in the world the following year, due to the lingering effects of the Tambora eruption. Global weather changes were incredibly sporadic, although most times it was always just so freezing cold. As you can expect, the summer season got affected significantly. Crops across Asia, North America, and Europe were significantly affected, with both animals and people also dying in droves. It's really not so possible to compare the Tambora explosion to a possible eruption at Yellowstone, especially since the last Yellowstone eruption happened before recorded history began. Nevertheless, Tambora kind of serves as the perfect template for us all to consider. If Yellowstone is really as large as they say it is, then I think it's safe to say that we should all be as worried as Joe Rogan is. Chapter 4. Could Yellowstone Really Blow Up? As I said earlier, the last time Yellowstone erupted was about 631,000 years ago. The entire caldera has remained since then, always reminding us that it's lurking and could go boom anytime soon. However, while it's fascinating to think that Yellowstone is pretty much just lying dormant, that isn't actually the case. The entire region is buzzing with activity, emitting small earthquakes, geothermal heat, and geysers that erupt sporadically. Each year, there are thousands of small earthquakes recorded in the land area surrounding Yellowstone, indicating the constant movement of magma deep beneath the surface. Basically, it's kind of like the Earth giving us a warning to not sleep on this volcano. The dangers might be present beneath the ground, but things could always change, and the volcano could blow up any day. If Mount Pinatubo has taught us anything, it's that earthquakes can be a major trigger of volcanic activity, and with Yellowstone's surrounding areas being especially prone to earthquakes, there really is no telling what could happen. So far, most scientists believe that an eruption of the Yellowstone volcano might not happen for the next few hundred thousand years, or perhaps even more. And to be fair, they seem relatively prepared to handle a possible eruption today. The U.S. government has agencies that monitor activities around Yellowstone, both above and below the ground, 
all with the aim of checking out whether or not we are safe from a possible imminent explosion. Everything from tectonic shifts under the ground to the movement of gases, and even geyser eruptions, is being constantly monitored around Yellowstone Park. So, there is a general sense that if something was to go awry, the government as well as experts could be prepared. Chapter 5. Asteroids Hitting the Earth Speaking of events that could lead to the complete wipeout of humanity, another example that seems to have a lot of people, including and especially Joe Rogan, worried is a potential asteroid strike. Back in 2019, Joe had solo comedian Brian Callen on his podcast where he spoke about the potentially devastating effects of a possible asteroid hitting the planet. Joe went on to show Brian what appeared to have been a report about an asteroid that came close to the Earth and which was wielding some really insane levels of force explosion. Asteroid hits aren't new, of course. The Earth has seen its fair share of asteroid strikes happening time and again, from the one that reportedly killed the dinosaurs to the frequent ones that hit different parts of the planet every once in a while. But for Joe, the major fear is that an asteroid could hit one day that would lead to so much devastation that we would literally not be able to handle it. In another episode of his podcast, Joe spoke to Graham Hancock, a British investigative journalist and author, and raised specific concerns over the possibility of an asteroid hitting the world and destroying much of the tools that we need to survive today. Graham agreed with Joe, pointing out that a lot of things in today's world would be affected if something like a massive asteroid was to strike the planet today. Despite the imminent danger, Graham also pointed out that there are possible ways to mitigate the threat of these asteroids, and as it appears, the technology of today might just be what saves us from a possible strike. So, as Graham explained, it's really not a question of whether we can do something about it. It's more of a question of whether we will do something about it. Governments and companies have the chance to go into space and mine these asteroids, as well as nudge them away from a potential collision with the Earth. If they can just get their act together, we could be fine. Now, it might seem like asteroids won't pose much danger to the Earth, especially since our planet has survived several asteroid hits. But as Joe pointed out earlier, it appears that we've all just been lucky not to really get hit by an asteroid that could really do some serious damage. For a perfect example of this, Joe and Neil deGrasse Tyson both explained in another episode of the Joe Rogan Experience that even asteroids that don't make contact with the Earth can have some pretty devastating effects. Like Graham Hancock, Neil deGrasse Tyson was also quick to point out that a defense plan to protect us from asteroids will be very important if we hope to survive long-term as a species because, while humanity has so far been relatively lucky with these things, the very worst thing for us would be for our luck to run out. So far, Neil doesn't see much being done in this regard. As he explained to Joe, experts are mindful of the threat of a potential asteroid strike, but there isn't much in terms of a possible solution or defense mechanism just yet. Basically, Neil explained that if a massive asteroid or a comet were to be heading for the Earth with a 100% certainty, the best thing that the experts would be able to do at this moment would be to tell everyone when it would hit and the parts of the world that would be affected. Besides that, we're all pretty much on our own. Now, to put that in context, this episode was aired back in September 2018, and up until now, there really isn't much that suggests that we have a defense mechanism in place that can help us in the event of an asteroid strike. Yeah, that's pretty scary. We need to act now. The question, of course, is whether our level of preparedness is actually enough to prevent a potential disaster from happening. Explosion? <clears throat> the meteor that exploded yes. in, uh, like, December? Yes. Oh, that's what you're gonna December, out. yeah, this meteor that exploded in December had something like 50 times the Was that amount on the Earth, of though? power in the atmosphere. Oh, okay. Oh, 10. 10, ten times. atomic bombs. Jeez. 10 times the power of the atomic bomb that exploded in Hiroshima. Wow. Yeah, and it exploded in our atmosphere. Say hypothetically that the Yellowstone volcano decides to wake up tomorrow and erupt, or an asteroid is spotted today that is on a collision course with the Earth and would hit in less than a year. Does the government really have what it takes to make sure that we're all protected, and there is no issue? What are the plans in place? Will everyone be catered to, or will it just be the few among us who are wealthy enough to afford protection? Remember the movie 2012? It gave a pretty harrowing picture of what could happen if a cataclysmic event happens, and everyone is pretty much doomed. At the end of the day, it was only those who were well-connected and who had the means to afford protection that survived the entire ordeal. If Yellowstone were to erupt tomorrow, what really happens to the rest of us? These are definitely the types of questions that keep me up at night. How about you? There's a lot to unpack when it comes to existential threats to us as a planet, whether it's the fact that Yellowstone could erupt one day in what could easily be the largest volcanic event in recorded history or the possibility of an asteroid hitting the planet and wiping us all out. But the fact that we're all still here should at least count for something.